That's fun. That's games. That's interaction. That's the thing that unifies us. Our church is up there hollering going, yeah. And you can just hear the air go out of the room when I shoot one and it goes in. <laughs>
You see, we look on the inside, we know all of our fallacy and our shortcoming. And the biggest problem we have is loving us because we, we, we despise our failure. We despise our shortcoming. And the enemy uses that against us. He takes that, that disdain that we have for ourselves and he takes away our victory. He steals our vision. He steals our hope. Oh, but let me tell you, I am is still on the throne. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you will call on me, I will be a strength in the time of trouble. Reach out and know that I am God. I am forever and ever. And my mercy is going to be born forever. Get you this morning. God is good. Hear me when I tell you, when you get a Bible with those around you, you may stumble, but somebody will grab you and pick you up. I saw something yesterday that was just, it was one of the funniest things I had ever seen in my life. I had gone over to Paul's <laughs> and, and I had gotten over there and I pulled up. There's ice underneath the snow. It's snow and he says, what are we going to do about the parking lot? I said, I don't know. I'll put sand on it. We're talking about it. He gets out of the truck. He's got Jill and Brooke and Quincy and Kate. Well, Quincy and Kate, they, they float by the ground. They never touch the ground. I don't know how kids do that, but they don't do it. I got out of my, my truck, and I, Paul got out, and we're watching, and the next thing I know, Brooke is on the ground. And I heard somebody laugh, and Jill was on the ground. <laughs> now, if you don't think that's funny, you should have seen it. And we laughed. Our sides hurt so bad. I walk around the end of the house, and all of a sudden I feel the earth move <laughs> under my feet. <laughs> and I looked, yeah, you heard the song. I looked around, and Paul has cowboy boots up in the air, <laughs> snow going down the back of his rearless wood jeans. <laughs> and he goes, Did you feel that? <laughs> I feel the earth moving. I mean, they hit the ground so hard. It had so bad the two girls ran, both of them ran up the steps, never touched the ice on the steps, and ran to the bathroom they were laughing so hard. Now that's, that's funny. That, that is a, I don't know why I told you that story now, but, but that's funny. You, you get in those situations where you see the look on people's faces, and if you had seen the look on Brooke's face when she hit the ground, and then Jill's face when she hit the ground. And then Paul's face because he had been adamant about laughing at them. Because the truth was, this was second time for Paul to be you got to be careful. You don't want the enemy to divide us. If we'd all gotten together and eased up there, we'd have probably made it fine. But we don't do that. Or if we do it, when we're already in the process of falling, we try to get help. I'm fixing to call this right now. There's hamburgers right here. I can smell it. I want to kill Randy. Tell him to go quit. I mean, you get right in the middle of falling, and the next thing you know, you drag somebody down with you. When you unify and you make up your mind, nobody's going to get to the man on my right. Nobody's getting the man on my left. Nobody's going to get to the man in my front. And nobody's getting the man in my rear. Before it's over with, you will have overcome because you have unified and the enemy cannot divide you. You see, the Bible said you're going to be one of two kinds of people. You're going to be a gatherer or you're going to be a scatterer. Matthew 13, 47 says, Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw away the bad ones. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into a fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 12 and 30 says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Now all of that is said because whether we like it or we don't like it, there's going to be a separation of that which is valuable from that which is not valuable. That which is committed to the kingdom and that which is not a part of the kingdom. 
He is going to judge that which is righteous and that which is unrighteous. The world doesn't want to hear that message. They're not prepared to hear that message. They hate that message because they don't want conscience. They don't want conviction. They don't want to deal with the morality of the day. But I'm telling you, there's a breach. And we as the church have been called to repair the breach. And we are either going to be gatherers or we're going to be scatterers. We're either going to be unified in the purpose or we're going to be unified against the purpose. And I tell you, there's going to be a lot more opposed to the purpose than those that are helping build the kingdom of God. Ezekiel 13 and 3 says, This is what the sovereign Lord says, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Your prophets, O Israel, are like jackals among ruins. You have not gone up to the breaks in the wall to repair it for the house of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. I want you to pay attention closely with me in that portion of Scripture where it says that they follow their own spirits. When you get into a conversation and the first thing you hear someone say is, well, if you want to know what I think about it, you know you're in trouble. Because it doesn't matter what you think about it. It doesn't matter what I think about it. It only matters what this book declares about. There is a day coming when the trump of God is going to sound. And the church and the bride will be prepared. The Bible said the bride will ready herself. In Revelation it said very clearly, the bride will ready herself. You and I are the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. And we must prepare ourselves. But we cannot prepare ourselves if we follow our own spirits. Our own spirits are consumed with destruction. Our own spirits are divided from the things of God. I will operate in what I feel. I think this is going to be all right. Anybody ever been there? And it got stinky in a hurry. Because my feeling was wrong. The truth of the matter, my spirit, what I want in my flesh, is dead. What I need to do is know what God's plan is. Know what His Word says. And if I hide that Word in my heart, then I'll overcome. I'll make it because the Word declares what it is. He'll tell me what my feeling is. I was watching HGTV last night and this couple was trying to buy a house and, and the wife said something to the husband and he said to her, and these were his words, No, honey, I just knew that you would tell me what I was going to like. Now you wives don't stand there and act like you don't do that. <laughs> You're going to tell me what I'm going to like. Well, I got news for you. It may not work that way always in marriage, but it better work that way with the things of the Holy Spirit. You better let Him tell you what you're going to like because He doesn't make mistakes. Amen. His choices 